My dear brothers and sisters, good morning. <clears throat> My name is Sister Sevatrix. They call me Sister Seva. <laughs> I belong to the congregation of the Sisters of Our Lady of Usambara, and this congregation is located on the northeastern part of Tanzania. And for some of you who may wonder where is Tanzania, uh, Tanzania is one of the countries in East Africa. For few of you or some of you who have been to Kenya or Uganda, Tanzania is on the southern part of those two countries. So you could either take a bus from either of those two countries to my country or from Tanzania to either Kenya or, or Uganda. <coughs> on behalf of my community, I would like to thank the uh, Reverend Bishop Malloy and his pastoral team for counting us among so many applicants of the year to take part in the mission co-op of this year. There are so many, so many organizations, dioceses, religious orders from all over the world who apply to come to the USCA to uh, talk and address the needs of the people that they minister in their countries. And so it takes time for the diocese to decide who for sure is going to take part uh, in a certain year. So you can imagine how many letters we may have sent to the diocese until we got picked this year. And it is a blessing for us. We are so happy to be one of the chosen this year. And in special way, I would like to thank Monsignor Dan Dodge, uh, Father, and the whole pastoral team and all of you here at St. Patrick's for saying yes for us to come to your parish to share uh, a little bit about our missionary work in Tanzania. So the Congregation of the Sisters of Our Lady of Usambara was founded in 1954 by Bishop Anthony Authors in collaboration with the Precious Blood Sisters. Those who were among the missionaries who came to evangelize the continent of Africa at that time from Europe. The precious blood sisters who came from Ireland to South Africa and then from South Africa over to our country. And uh, Bishop Anthony uh, and his order uh, came to um, Dar es Salaam, which is the big city of my country. And so he was um, assigned to go to start a diocese, a new diocese in the Diocese of Tanga, Tanzania at that time. So the need uh, to involve the local people in the diocese. In 1954, Tanzania, as many other African countries, were still very poor, very, very poor. And the missionaries who came to our continent, to my country, faced a lot, a lot of problems, including language barriers and diseases, and where most of them were attacked by, by malaria, they died. And those who even found it very hard to work in the, in, in the diocese, in the continent, decided to go back to, to, to Europe. And so my bishop and those who stayed, they have to come out with um, something for them to be able to continue the work of God. And so my bishop thought of an order of women to assist him, and that is us. That's how we were born. And by then, we were meant to work within the Diocese of Tanga, Tanzania. But today, we have expanded our missionary work in other dioceses in Tanzania. We uh, provide, uh, we do different ministries through education, health services. Uh, we provide water. We take care for uh, the young ones, et cetera, et cetera. Now, education. Um, in the section of education, which we feel so successful and so blessed to do it, we provide education uh, for both girls and boys from kindergarten through high school. We also have a simple college where we provide education for young women and men for them to be able to teach in the low level of our education. And we have a special program where we have boarding schools where we educate young women. And 
So people ask me, why do you favor girls? We don't favor girls because we, we have boys also in our other levels of schools. But the, the boarding schools are special for, for, for girls. And this is because of the historical background that we have in my country and the most part of African countries where women were not given chance to go to school. They were left home while their brothers were taken to school, and they were meant to be raised and wait for them to be married. And there is, uh, in most of the communities, early forced marriages from 12 years old on, where girls then, uh, before they even matured, they have been given to men to marry them. And we, the sisters, uh, having understand the situation and the, 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 the society that we grew in, we understand the problem and how important it is to educate these young women. And uh, through our education, we have seen a fruitfulness of our work. Most of the girls who come to our schools receive the best education to the point where they go out to colleges and some of them have come as far as to the United States and gained their masters or gained their PhDs. I have a few of my classmates who went to St. Mary's High School where I went. That is one of our, our school, it's a big school. And they have come here and they received the education. I have two uh, who work in Florida. One have uh, gotten her PhD and she's a professor in one of the colleges. Those are just few. But also educating a woman is educating a society. And through education of women, we have seen life changes for better, where most of these girls go out to raise health family and educate the rest of the families and the society. The importance of educating women and how uh, that they have the rights, just like boys, to be educated. And they, they have things to offer also in the society when they are given chance. We include also our kids from our orphanage system who uh, we raise and put them in the school system and help them until they, they can go out to be independent. So that we, we are so, so proud about that. And in the health system, the health system in my country, Tanzania, and most part of Africa is very poor, leading to what I call unnecessary death. There is a lot of death because people do not get medication they need. At the same time, in these hospitals, there is no equipment to be able to treat people. As a result, people go to the hospital and they go back home without medication. And there is no equipment to diagnose what for sure they are going through to be able to give them the right treatment that they need. And so the sisters from my order uh, provide health services in our own hospitals, the assistant hospitals, and also we go out to the villages to provide necessary vaccines to kids whose parents will not bring them to the hospital, and the seniors who cannot get to the hospitals because they cannot afford to do so or they do not have someone to bring them. Um, I am a victim of um, people who lost their parents. My mother passed away uh, August 15, 2019, after having a stroke and going for a long time with medication, no medication. Medication, no medication. One time she will go to the hospital and get a dose of her problem, and the next time she goes, they will say, oh, we don't have that medication, try next time. And afterwards, she passed away. My father, with a problem of stomach that he feel like going to the um, bathroom, but when he goes, he, you know, he, he can't go, took him to the hospital. He was in the hospital for three good days with no medication, no treatment, and he passed away in April 2020 in an agony of her problem. That is not a problem to, to, to let someone go, you know. It is very simple to be treated. I always say if the, my parents were here, probably they would be living today. But that is because of the lack of medication, the lack of equipment that we needed to uh, help these people. And um, 
when I entered my order, we have a big mango tree outside of our convent, and every day we'll come out to find people sitting outside waiting for the sisters to provide them with medication and food. And we cannot be proud enough without having good people like you who contributed to us and, of course, through our effort. Now we have a place where we call hospital for us to be able to provide medication to all the people who surround us in that area. And in all areas where we provide service, we make sure that we have a hospital and a place to help people who come to us. Mothers who go through labor, they have to stand in the line waiting to see a doctor. As a result, they die before they, 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 they see the doctor. So you can see how much needs are there for us to help these people to be able to save life. And water is essential for life. We all need water. Even here in church, we need water for our service. And uh, in, our, in most of your houses, all, all of your houses, I'm sure you have water in the house. Simply you go to the bathroom and flush the toilet. You go to the kitchen and turn the tap, you have water there. But uh, for most people in, in, in my country, women will appreciate so, so much if they have a hole outside a couple of blocks where they can go with a bucket to be able to fetch water to bring to the house. Our students, sometimes they have to cut short their studies to walk miles for half an hour, 40 some an, uh, minutes to go to fetch water to bring to school for them to have water for the, 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 someone to be able to prepare food for them, for them to be able to clean, et cetera, et cetera. And so it is our major campaign to provide safe, clean water in schools and in, 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 uh, in, in communities that surround us to help women to uh, avoid for them walking for a long distance. I just took a good shower here this morning. If I was at, uh, at my convent, I need a bucket and a bowl for me to, you know, bring water to the bathroom for me to be able to take a shower. If I need a, a, a warm shower, I may have to go to boil water in, in, in a pot for me to be able to get hot water. And here you just turn the, the tap, you have cold water, you have hot water for you to be able to take a shower. It, it, it is um, unbelievable, you may say, how can this happen when I'm speaking? And I always, always convince most people where I speak that for some of you who will get a chance to go on safari, to either of the countries, let it be Tanzania, let it be Kenya or somewhere else. Please, please don't end up on the national parks. Try to go out to see and experience life of people outside of the national parks uh, where you can stay in, in a good hotel, etc. And if it is Sunday and you, you can go to, to church and meet the faithful there in Tanzania, they will be happy to see you. Even though they have very little, but they are very welcoming and will be happy to welcome you there. And um, of course, we raise a lot of kids who have been left by their parents. So I don't want to keep you longer. If you want me to explain more, I'll be outside of Tamas. I can share more uh, stories about uh, my community, about, about Tanzania. But I'm here today to ask you to be part of our, uh, our ministry, to be part of our mission to help people through your prayers and through your second contribution that you'll be making today. Know that whatever money you give, it will be help, it will be help to save the life of someone there in Tanzania to help uh, a, a mother who is waiting to go through labor, to help someone who is sitting, seeking to get medication, to help little girls and boys who do not have uh, school supplies and they need a notebook, a pencil to write, uh, for them to be able to, prov to provide them with those kind of things. A kid who is almost half naked for us to be able to cover them and of course to provide the medication to save life. I have a belief, and we all have a belief, that Americans save life. Not only here in America, but all over the world, you have been on the front line to save life. Thank you so much. 
for what you do, and thank you so much for welcoming he me here in this beautiful, faithful community. God bless you. God bless the United States of America. Thank you.